What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today Apple released iOS 14.7 Beta 4 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. And this comes about two weeks after the release of Beta 3 and about one week after iOS 15 Beta 2. So in addition to iOS, we also got iPadOS 14.7 Beta 4, watchOS 7.6 Beta 4, macOS Big Sur 11.5 Beta 4, and tvOS 14.7 beta 4. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 14.7 beta 4 and what is new in this update. So let's go ahead and start off with the size of this update. You can see here on my iPhone 12, it came in right under 300 megabytes. So about 268 megabytes on this device. It came in a little bit bigger on other devices, but it should be around this area if you're coming from beta 3. So if we go ahead and check out the build number, if we go to our settings, to general, about, and then 14.7, you can see the build here is 18G5052D. So we do have a D at the end of the build number, which means we probably will still have one more beta left. It might be the RC, but we'll talk more about that near the end of this video. And if we go down a little bit further to the modem firmware, you can see that is unchanged in this update. So it remains at 1.80.01. So if you were having connectivity issues on the prior beta, on beta three, those most likely will not be fixed in this update because there is no modem update here with beta four. But beta three probably fixed a lot of modem and connectivity related issues because of that SIM card issue that we had with beta two. So anyways, what's new here in iOS 14.7 beta four. And once again, just like every other beta 14.7, Apple includes very little in the release notes. So you can see they really only mention one resolved issue here, and that has to do with battery health. So it says restored battery service messages that may have disappeared after reboot on some iPhone 11 models. So that, and then one known issue with the SK ad network right there, but really nothing major at all in these release notes. Once again, just like we've seen previously with the three previous betas so this is going to be a pretty minor update overall which is expected for a 0.7 release especially after 14.6 was kind of a big release we had a lot of features in that so i really would not go into this expecting a lot of changes especially here on beta 4 but i did notice one thing with the home application of course one of the big new features here in ios 14.7 has to do with home pods and the home pod timer so you can now set a timer from the home application if you just go ahead let's go to here and if you go ahead and haptic press on your home pod of course it does need to be on 14.7 as well you can see we have timers right here so instead of having to ask siri you could do it manually here inside of the home application and i noticed that this is a lot smoother of an experience here in beta 4. so i had issues with this of course on beta 1 and beta 2 but even in beta 3 it was just not as fluid as it is here in beta 4. so this is continuously getting improved and i have noticed that the sound is slightly louder now as well when the timer actually goes off on the home pod so really just a minor change with the timers there and i did also notice a change inside of podcasts as well so if we go into the podcast application then go to library and then if we go to our shows right here you will see that the top little panel we had right here is gone so it used to say things like followed and all so if i pull up ios 15 over here the previous ios 14.7 beta had a very similar layout to what we see in ios 15 where you see it's sectioned off by followed and all right there under shows but that is no longer here in beta 4 so i'm not sure if apple is just keeping that for ios 15 or what but that is one thing i noticed after updating here to beta 4 now also if we go to edit the shows if we click on these three dots right here and then go to edit shows and then go to delete you can see that we get some slightly updated verbiage here so it now says unfollow and remove instead of just remove i believe it just said remove in previous betas but it now says that and a little bit more verbiage there as well as to what you're doing when you actually delete a podcast or unfollow a podcast on here so just some very minor changes inside of the podcast application and of course we do have podcast subscriptions here in beta 4 nothing has changed with that there's actually this section now inside of browse that shows explore subscription so you can tap on that and see some of the podcast shows that offer the subscriptions so if you go ahead and tap on this you can see right here you get this little section that says you could try it for free so i believe that every podcast subscription has a minimum of like a three-day free trial so i've seen three days i've seen five days and now this one is seven days of a free trial 
So I guess it depends on when they release new content for premium subscribers, but you could do that right there. And of course you can try it free and it does show up where all your other subscriptions for like applications show up. And also if you go into up here, if we go to listen now and then go to our icon right here, you can see you have the manage subscriptions. So you can manage all of your podcast subscriptions by simply tapping on that. But of course it will take you to the app store where it shows all your app store subscriptions as well. It's not its own dedicated section, which I wish would change because it is kind of separate and I wish they would have a dedicated section for that, but they do not. So really just some minor changes here with podcasts and 14.7 beta four. Now I've also seen a lot of people report that their spatial audio and lossless audio just kind of disappears here on 14.7. So I've not had this issue, but if you have, you know, if you go into an album, you can see this one just shows lossless, but some will show Dolby Atmos and lossless as you can see right there for this album. And if you go into your settings and if we go back, if we go all the way down to music, and then to Dolby Atmos, you wanna make sure this is turned on to automatic or always on. I would personally recommend automatic because always on, you know, turns on Dolby Atmos for albums that are not ready for and it does not sound good, but just make sure that is not turned on to off. So some people have been re reporting that this just kind of disappears and they're not seeing it anymore in Apple Music, but you may have accidentally turned that off or you might be in a country like India. So spatial audio and lossless audio is coming to India very soon. It is not there with this beta release. I would imagine it's going to be an over the air update, a server side update. So it's not gonna require a you know iOS update or a beta or anything like that. It's just going to come to Apple Music whenever Apple is ready to release that in India. So I know I've had a lot of people from India asking about that. I will let you guys know when it is pushed out for you guys over there in India. But as far as overall quality or anything like that here on 14.7 beta four, nothing has changed with spatial or lossless audio in this update. It's still performing very well for me. And then as far as the SIM card bug, of course we had the big SIM card failure bug in beta two, which caused some people to have a bricked device. And a lot of people had no service. They couldn't make phone calls. They had to manually downgrade. That was a big issue in beta two. And that's the reason that public beta testers never got a beta two. They jumped straight from beta one to beta three because Apple just knew that that you know, version was completely bugged out and it caused some major issues. But since then, I've not seen any reports of SIM card failure issues or cell connectivity issues, which is a good sign. However, we still do have a couple of bugs here in 14.7. And of course, one of the big ones is the music cue bug. So it's not showing up now, but sometimes when I press shuffle on an album, you will see that we have the music cue bug where the first song cannot be moved. So I don't have it right here. It doesn't happen every single time, but every once in a while it will happen where the first song just simply cannot be moved. And it's been a bug for a while. It's even on iOS 15 betas as well, which is pretty annoying, but that is still outstanding. Also the AirPlay to HomePod feature is still not the best here in 14.7 beta four. I've not noticed any change in that. And I've also seen people report issues with Sidecar here in 14.7 beta three, and I'm guessing beta four as well, where they have issues connecting their iPad on the 14.7 betas to their Mac. So sometimes they get a can't connect error or it just uses half of the iPad screen. So if you guys have had issues with the sidecar feature, let me know in a comment down below. And of course, let me know if it's been fixed here with beta four as well. And as far as green tents goes, I've not seen very many people talking about green tents at all, at least not in my comments or really anywhere on social media. So I would assume that green tent has been resolved for most people, at least for the most part here on 14.7. And if it has not been fully fixed, I would expect iOS 15 to fix that for you because a lot of people were starting to worry that this is like a hardware issue, but we've seen these green tents or just random tent colors on iPhones before with the iPhone 10R, for example, we saw that and it got fixed, you know, it took almost a year to fix it, but it did get fixed with a software update. And it looks like that's the case here with green tents as well for those of you with the iPhone 12 with that issue. So that is good news. And of course, if you guys have any, you know, thing else to say about green tents, let me know in a comment down below. Now, as far as performance goes here in beta four, it feels about the same as beta three for me. I mean, I haven't really been able to tell any difference. Now, of course, I don't use 14.7 on a daily basis anymore just because I am testing out the iOS 15 betas, but I still do use it every once in a while. Probably every other day I use 14.7 just to browse around, just to keep myself you know, in the know with the software. And it feels very stable. Of course, it is a lot more stable than iOS 15. That's a given, but it feels good. But I wouldn't say it's any better than beta three. It feels about the same for me. And as far as the Geekbench scores here, let me just go ahead and run a quick one real quick to see how it compares to beta three. So you can see we got a 1596 on the single core and a 40 
368 on the multi-core. So it is slightly lower than it was in beta three. You can see the comparison there. This is beta four, this is beta three. So slightly lower, but of course these do not tell the full story, but they are still fun to run these tests and show you guys how they stack up against previous betas. Now, as far as the battery life goes, here in 14.7 beta four, I would expect it to be about the same as beta three, which has been fine for me. A lot of people did complain about battery life and this was on like Apple forums and everything with beta two, but beta three seemed to resolve those battery drain issues for most people. So I would expect beta four to continue, you know, being solid and steady for battery life. I've not really seen too many people complain in my beta three video about the battery life. So you guys let me know in a comment down below how battery life is treating you, but I would expect it to be pretty solid here with beta four as we near a final release. And speaking of the final release, when can we expect to see iOS 14.7 released to the public? So today is June 29th. I would expect to see iOS 14.7 in mid July. So as early as early July, but I would say that mid July is more likely. So we will probably see an RC build next week and then probably the final on the week of the 12th. So I would expect to see iOS 14.7 released to the general public on the week of the 12th, most likely on July 13th. Now where things get tricky is we also have iOS 15 going on right now and iOS 15, I'm also expecting to see a beta next week as well. So July 6th is also a good possibility to see iOS 15 developer beta three. Now the public beta of iOS 15 could also come out next week as well. And that just depends on what build of iOS 15 Apple decides, you know, is fit for the public beta. Is it going to be developer beta three? Is it going to be developer beta two? Because if it's developer beta two, that means that as early as this Thursday in two days on July 1st, or even July 2nd, we could see iOS 15 public beta one. But if Apple is waiting until developer beta three to push out the public release, then we'll probably see it, you know, late next week, maybe the eighth or the ninth. So it's really hard to say right now. And Apple is of course very unpredictable, but the main thing you guys need to know is that the final release of 14.7 is most likely coming on the week of the 12th. Of course, it is very possible to be released next week. You know, the final release, Apple could always skip the RC build and just go straight to final. It's really hard to say, but those are just my predictions as of right now. And of course, follow me on Twitter if you guys want to stay up to date with, you know, things, if things change, if we see something released earlier than expected, that could change the schedule. So just follow me on Twitter so you guys don't miss the latest when it comes to these iOS releases. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. iOS 14.7, of course, most people are on iOS 15 at this point. You are smart if you're staying on iOS 14, just because iOS 15 does have a lot of issues, but you know, not a lot going on here in 14.7 beta four. But of course, like always, I do like to bring you guys every single update, no matter how big and important or how small and, you know, kind of irrelevant <laughs> the update is. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe for a lot more content coming on iOS 14 and iOS 15. And of course, I did also want to mention that iOS 14.8 betas should start after iOS 14.7 gets released to the public. So I know some people thought that 14.7 was the final iOS 14 release. But no, I am expecting a 14.8 after 14.7 gets released to the public. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.